Now let's move on to the fun bit. Now let's look at what we've been talking about around for the last few hours. The time value of money. The time value of money. Right. This is an absolutely fundamental concept. If we know our time value of money idea, we can apply it again and again and again. So, let's just start with a silly idea. This is a timeline. We have year zero today. We have year one, one year's time. And I'm going to ask you a very simple question. Would you rather receive £100 today or £100 in one year's time? Let's make it a little bit more realistic. Let's pretend, okay, that's as good as it gets for me, that that's £100. Would you prefer it today or would you prefer to wait for one year? Well, yes, it's an obvious answer. You want it today, don't you? You want to get your greasy mitts on it now, rather than having to wait. Well, okay. That being the case, let's just go one step further and consider the reasons why. Why would you rather have £100 today than in one year? Well, the answer I get from most of my students is inflation. And I would agree with that because we expect the monetary value to fall over time. I would agree that that is a reason. But what I want to get at is this. There is still a time value even if there were no inflation. So why else? Why else do you want the £100 today? Well, let's make it personal. Either I give you £100 today, or I promise that I'm going to give you £100 in one year. Well, OK, you guys are fine judges of character. You can appreciate that there is a risk associated with waiting. You don't trust me. OK. I would certainly agree that that is a one compelling reason, and I know myself very well. But there's a further reason. If you have the money today, you can do something with it. You could invest it in a capital asset and generate a return. Or you could put it in the bank and earn interest. Or you could put it on the 330 at Haydock. Uh, that's a horse race. What I'm talking about is the idea of the opportunity cost of capital. If you have the money, you can do something with it. If you don't, you can't. Now, this is very important. If you want to discuss time value with the examiner, don't just say it does not consider the time value of money. Give the examiner a little bit of background. Interest him. Make him think that you know what you're talking about. Well, OK. We have discussed why the time value of money occurs. But we haven't said what it is. So if we go back to what we had before, Let's just change this a bit. You've already decided to take your £100 today. My next question is this. How much would I have to offer you in one year's time for you to give up your £100 today? How much? So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this £100 away. If I offered you, what, £102, would that be enough compensation? Oh, OK, then. £105, what do you think? 
Well, I'll tell you what, my final offer. I'm going to offer you £108. Let's just agree that you are equally happy with £108 in one year or £100 today. To you, they are worth the same. If they are worth the same, we have now established our time value. What you're saying is that effectively you are willing to give up £100 today in order to receive £108 in one year. Or, to put it another way, you are willing to receive a return of £8 based on, well, you give up based on an investment of £100. You could say that the time value was 8%. This is what we are focusing on. We're focusing on the relationship between money and time. If we have that relationship, we are sorted. We can do this. There's only one other thing that we have to introduce at this point in time. The next thing that we want to introduce, very simple, probably something you've come across before, the idea of compound interest. Now, what I'm looking at here is a simple example. What I'm going to do is invest £1,000 today. And what I want to know is, given that the interest rate equals 10%, what is it worth in one, two, three, four years' time. It's a very simple idea indeed. Not a problem at all. To do this, let's just set up a nice little diagram. We'll put the years down the left-hand side. One, two, three, and four. We start with the value today, what we describe as the PV, or present value. And what we want to know is what it will be worth in one and two and three and four years' time, the future value, FV. Well, we start with £1,000. The first year is obvious. We're earning a 10% return, so we can multiply by one to represent the principal, the original £1,000, plus 0.1 to represent the 10% interest. Therefore, at the end of the first year, we have £1,100. How does compound interest work? Well, it's very simple. Compound interest works on this basis. When we come to the second year, Interest in the second year is not just earned on the original £1,000. It is earned on the balance to date, the original £1,000, plus any interest already earned. If that's the case, to establish the value at the end of the second year, all we do is this. Our present value was £1,100. We multiplied by 1.1 to uplift for interest in the first year. And in the second year, we just do the same again. We charge a further 10% on the full amount that we already have. That gives us something like 1, 2, 1, 0. The third year, £1,000 multiplied by, well, all I want to get at is this. How can we make it a bit simpler? Instead of multiplying by 1.1 again and again and again, couldn't we simply describe it this way? 1.1 to the power 3? And we get something like 1, 3, 3, 1. Or, year 4, we have our 1,000 pounds multiplied by 1.1 to the power 4. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. 
Well, that's it. That's how compound interest works. And what we want to do is to reflect this in a simple formula. Well, hold on a moment. What do we have here? We have our present value. No problem. We multiply by 1.1. Well, hold on a moment. The 1 relates to the principal. The point 0.1 relates to the rate of interest plus R. 1 plus R, 1 plus the rate of interest. And what does this 4 represent? Well, yes, 4 represents the number of accounting periods, pardon me, the number of compounding periods, normally, in our case, years. N. The present value multiplied by 1 plus R to the N gives us the future value. It's as simple as that. Now, we're going to apply this a number of times as we go through. It's not a big issue. We will learn to do this very easily. The only thing I would ask you to do is this. You've got to make sure that you can deal with the power N in your calculators. I know it's pretty obvious, but let's just make sure we're happy with that. To establish the power N, the sort of buttons you would find on your calculator are X to the blob, or to the power sign, or x to the y, or y to the x. So make sure that you're absolutely happy that you know how you do that. And of course, the easiest thing to do is to check that out by using the numbers that we've just done here. So maybe, I don't know, maybe you pick this one here. OK? and make sure that you can calculate that figure. Right. So we have calculated how time value of money works, and not just how time value of money works, but how we may compound doing so.